Yeah, that was called the Jimbe Khan. So that's called Jimbe Call. So that means you're calling, giving, attention. Something's on the way. So then after a little bit, I was going to dance. Yeah, when, when she comes. Yeah. Yes. So a little intermission. Well, help yourselves. Oh, I suppose. Yeah, we have one and three. Thank you. Oh, boy. Can you keep this on me? There's a little bit. Huh? Yes, it's on me. No, 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 <laughs> and then we can get started. Maybe we can uh, see the president on the walk closer. What you think? Well, wait till she comes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they do. I think I was happy to see they put that spot there. It was like, okay, remember you were live right now. <laughs> I'm just telling you, like, you, you, you said it, so like, we weren't laughing. Wait, wait, here's, let me get out of the way, but here's the thing. Uh, when you got a mic in, you always got to believe really, everything is so hot. <laughs> so you got to make sure you don't say anything. <laughs> you know, just make an announcement to the, the record. Oh, okay. we can start with you. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we'll be starting in a few minutes. The, the princess uh, has arrived, and so we should be starting in a few minutes. We hope you enjoyed the entertainment, and thank you for your patience. We have a great program for you, and as I said, we should be starting uh, pretty short. Thank you for your patience.
The Prince she she part. She part here.
Hey, I've been, uh, okay. 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 Hey, President. Francis, you can come up on the elevator. How are you? Hey, Hi. How are you? So I guess our time was good. Yes, now you know something to eat? I wish I knew in advance. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I knew in advance. So I'll get some before I take the job. Um, there you go. I think that was my focus. Oh, cool. I think I'll uh, show you on the video about the princess and which which comes up. Yes, ma'am. Oh. 
share some of the reasons why I brought the Princess of Cancer here. One of the things we're working on also, uh, we need uh, the president and provost uh, sort of a uh, Princess of Cancer. She had trouble getting up there. She has, I think she's uh, going to go down. Okay. Okay. One of the things uh, she, she wants to do on campus uh, during the uh, United Nations uh, General Assembly, she wants to have a uh, African presidential forum at Mega Evans College where we have uh, four or five different presidents from African countries be on campus and talk about digital uh, revolution, uh, di digital, uh, the digital revolution, but also looking at uh, the skills gap and bringing more jobs. But she also is connected to uh, a bank that has $100 million and send thousands of African students in STEM and sports management programs here uh, to the U.S. and also for students to, to go there as well. So she started her uh, center nanotech and with uh, Sir Isaac Hayes, uh, you know, recipe that the singer Isaac Hayes. And so she started that program with him and she, she's also a migration uh, expert. She's a part of the African Union. I also uh, do some work, uh, service work. I'm the president of African Views, at, which is a uh, nonprofit international NGO with consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council. So I do a lot of uh, stuff around bringing the diaspora together. We're going to be doing some projects in uh, Ghana, culinary programs. And then Sarah Nam, uh, the, the executive director of African Views, is here. But I'm going to acknowledge she's a labor. One of the things we're trying to do, because I know since we are, uh, one of the things is we're going global and international, I think we have to globalize our students' education. And we have to make sure that they have experiences uh, in Africa. We need to bring in. So she's really focused on STEM. She's a graduate of uh, Rutgers and 
uh, like Dr. Uh, yeah, Dalen Murray about a bike, but I just say the preacher. So we set up a program with Rutgers already. I, I, I know the provost of Rutgers, uh, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Robinson, we're doing a program. They want to do a program with Mega Aristology as well. And she wants to do it with all the HBCU, this program where they had its access to $100 million to provide funding for students to come to school here. We want to create a work study job and employment and employment program as well. She'll tell more about it as well. So that's why we ask the uh, president and the uh, provost to be here. And thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know we're running a little late, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but you know, I guess the princess, you know, she. You know, <laughs> So, but those are some of the things that we're doing. And so I'm, I'm seeing if that's her. She wants a drummer to come down. She has to have a drummer come down. So, yes, ma'am. So one of the, the surprises we were going to give you, but they had to cancel, we were going to have the president of Gunner come today. She was. Because he was going to be speaking at the Black World Conference, but he, he couldn't make it because he had a family issue. And so, one of the things I, I I've been to forty of uh, the 50, 55 African countries, so I have a just I really have a, a great love for Africa and so forth. But I'm also one of the things that, that I'm gonna be doing as well, President Ramsey. I'm into rare earth elements and critical minerals, so in lithium. So I bought some I bought twenty five hectares of land in Zimbabwe. So we're gonna be processing uh that's that's sixty one acres, you know, you know twenty five hectares. So, so we're gonna be prepared. So, then, so we're gonna be creating job program. And I have my friend Sheldon Hoffman here. He, uh, for, for he's a fashion icon, for South Africa. He's designed uh, for President and Michelle Obama, Samuel Jackson. But we're gonna be doing some things that we really can't tell. But we're gonna be doing because we have to have NDA. But one reason I'm having him because that's part of the African views. We want to do some stuff around fashion and bring everything in manufacturing. So we're going to be doing a lot of different things uh, related to that as well. She's upset now. Okay, so I'll stop there and share more. And so uh, and then once you get in present, we bring word. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So with, without further ado, I'm going to ask uh, the president, uh, President Patricia Ramsey, the uh, opening remarks. President Ramsey. Good afternoon, everyone. I am pleased. Well, excuse me. I am I'm pleased to have an opportunity to come and to welcome you to Meg Rivers College. And I always like to share with our friends and family what Meg Rivers College is all about. Meg Rivers College was founded because of the Black community in Central Brooklyn. There wasn't a college in the Black community. And so back in the early 60s, we had advocates from the community to come together to say, we want a baccalaureate degree granting institution in our community. They fought hard. They were fought against but they persevered. And as a result of that perseverance, Mega Everest College was birthed. And so I say Mega Everest College is birthed out of community with social justice in its DNA. Named for Mega Wally Evers, who gave his life for people to have the right to vote in Mississippi. So he too was birthed with social justice in his, in his DNA, and therefore it is most fitting that the college would be named for him. We are the only four-year institution in this country named for a slain civil rights leader. And so we welcome you today, and particularly you, Princess, we are so happy that you could join us today to share with us here at Mega Evers College. And though I have not been to Ghana personally, I've been to a number of other African countries, never Ghana. I will say I have a connection because I came to Mega Evers. My last institution was Lincoln University of Pennsylvania, where Nkrumah received his degree. But thanks, Dr. Price, for your insight and for inviting the princess here to Mega Everest College. And we look forward uh, to hearing from you and look forward to what we can do as a college as it relates to connecting with the work that you do. And so to all of you, welcome. If you have not been here before, and if you have been here before, welcome back. Thank you. Before I call the provost up, I want to do some acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. Uh, we have a uh, senior vice president, uh, Jacqueline Clark, in the SVP. Uh, White hair, she had white hair had to leave, but she had came to show her support as well. So we thank her for her support. And Princess, you're gonna have to help me if I mess up mess up names right here. So we have uh, Your Highness King Ayiku, uh Abo Donu, the fourth of eight of eight of John. Thank you, Your Highness. We have uh, Princess O'Kansi, the daughter of his. Olu Fulu, that's a real name, that's a sister there. Olu Fulu, Milolo, Babalola. And I think we have Mr. Sheldon Kaufman. I share briefly, he's a designer, his design of Michelle and Barack Obama and uh, Sammy Jackson, a few others. So he's here from South Africa. And we have uh, Dr. Wally uh, 
I can buy that. One of the smartest guys. I know has three PhDs. I just he doesn't have a life. Has three PhDs. <laughs> he's a uh, executive director of African Views, and he's one of the founders of African African Views. And like I said, African Views uh, has uh, status with the United consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council, and so. When I had approvals come up and doing the program, I wanted to share some, about some program we're doing in Saranam, which you, you're going to really be, be interested in, for instance, because uh, Ghana uh, plays a uh, role there. And we're going to do that uh, African culinary uh, program we want to have in Ghana as well. And so I'm going to ask him after the program, get started, and you finish it, to say a few words. And so am I missing anyone? Uh, and I'd like to thank uh, Dr. De Langora and Professor Bramble for their support on this program because we couldn't. Been able to do it without them. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. And so, with that uh, being said, because the provost, she was going to do closing remarks, but she has another uh, assignment, so I'd like for her to come up and uh, so she, she has a few minutes so she can hear some before she has to leave. Provost Arcova, would you come up, please? Good afternoon and welcome, Princess. This is such an honor. Um, I'm going to be speaking from academic affairs. That's my primary post. And most of the individuals in this room are either students or faculty. And it's always an honor when you can look at the work of an individual, your work, and the global work that you've done on behalf of people across this world to ensure that employment, that the attention to the wrongs that have been give, done to people and how they have been trafficked in other countries to be workers. You know, I took a moment to look into your book and it was so fascinating that I fell asleep and woke up and said, I've got to continue to read. We are so honored here to have you at Major Harvest College. And we look to have any opportunity to partner with you, to partner with any of the missions that you wish to bring forward. So on behalf of Academic Affairs, here at Major at Everest College, we really appreciate you coming to visit us, to bring your honor uh, party with us. And as Dr. Price said, we really, would like to hear about how Mayor can partner with you. And unlike, uh, just like Dr. Lindsay, I haven't been to your country, I've been to some others, but you know, I will openly take the invitation. <laughs> well, well, well Provost, we're going to take your bone there because I'm doing a lot of work with her. Uh, her Excellency Princess O'Kansas. So we're going to get you to Ghana. And so if we want uh, President Ramsey to come to Ghana as well, because we're going to be, I see a lot of great things uh, between us, as I said before Princess got here about the African uh, program. And one of the reasons why I got involved, when I used to teach at Rutgers, one of the things that Princess O'Kansas asked me to share this story, I, I noticed a lot of the uh, minority students couldn't attend uh, college, complete their degrees. So I established a diversity fund at Rutgers University in Newark. And, uh, and that was in 2004 and funded it with like $50,000. I raised $50,000 to help students uh, complete their uh, education here. Uh, before they stopped the uh, study abroad, I raised $20,000 and took 16 students to South Africa. And I also donated my summer salary uh, to help those students. So one of the things I believe, uh, as Princess believe we're going to bring up here shortly, is that too much is given, much is required. So I never saw my dad child, I was 26 years old. And I wrote a book, and, and, and I was in the, I'll tell you a funny story, the reason why I like to travel, I don't know where I got it from. When I was in the sixth grade, I was absent from school. And then I came back the next day, and my sister was two years behind me, and the teacher asked me, Byron Price, where you been? I told her I just got back from Paris. I was in the sixth grade, and my sister said, boy, you been to no Paris? <laughs> I'm in the projects. <laughs> but but I always dreamed of sort of like traveling and, and seeing the world. And I wrote it in my scrapbook. And now I've been to 40 to 55 African countries. I've been to 
five of the seven continents. I haven't been to Australia and Antarctica, and I've been to 120 countries. So for our students, you know, when you when you think about it and you visualize it, you can make it come to fruition. And so that's, thank you. Partner with Chris because she really has a vision for education for young people. She really has a strong love for young people and people. And so, and it will it bring you to the diaspora together. And so, having said that, I'm going to start. Uh, I have shared to many of your friends uh, when you're here, but uh, there's a few more things about you before we bring you up. Let's see. I think I do. I'll, introduce, I'll show your book right quick. Then we'll bring you up on your book. For your book, it's two minutes. If you uh, give me two minutes, let me put the pad for you. <laughs> what did I do? Did I mess it up? No. 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 Thank you. Uh, and before I bring the uh, last thing I say, don't uh, buy solar panels. Uh, no. Seriously, there is a very good reason why the solar panels is approved because we enter renewable energy. <laughs> So before I bring up Her Excellency, one of the things uh, what I like about the program that she's gonna talk about with respect to bringing the students here, she focuses on work because as she's gonna point out in her book, you know, a lot of students, people come looking for decent work and then and, and like I'm not still a thunder, there's a lot of things that happen that move them away from their goal of getting decent work and education. She's gonna talk, come talk about that. And like I said, I, I've shown the video here, so I'm gonna introduce you. So we're honored to have Her Excellency, Reverend Dr. A.K. O'Kansi, visit our campus. 
one of the leaders, uh, one of the leaders, uh, I think global leaders in this area and a, and a visionary. So let's show her a, a warm web mega average college uh, welcome. Where she can, I have to teach you something before I can teach you. So, um, when I say trap, means may I have your permission to speak? Then your response will be yeah. All right, we'll try that. Take it <laughs> so, trap, umanyaba. Yeah, trap, umanyaba. Yeah, trap, 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 umanyaba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, in the West, I will say um, Dr. Patricia Ramsey, president of the Ferris College, and I will say Dr. Byron Price, uh, professor, uh, professor for public administration. And I will, but I think today is a special day, and I had a comment. You know, when you spoke about um, the select the others. And we talked about Lincoln University. It invoked the spirit of Kwame Nkrumah. And of course, you know, um, uh, Bill Marshall. And I'm just imagining their spirits of Dr. King and all of them in our midst and saying something is about to happen here today. And that's not going to be some bridges that are going to be built. So I have to go to the level of the ancestors in the, in the presence of. Uh, our uh, King Nene uh, Abodun Ambassador is now a human ambassador also. And also uh, my beloved daughter, Olufumi Lola Baba Lola, because God has given us wealth and, 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 and joy. And so that is that. And she really is like 10 children in one. So I want to. So I will say, uh, Dr. Patricia Ramsey will say, yeah, and then you respond, yeah, yeah, all right? You get it? Yes. So that's how we do it. So today we are going to do a little bit of some culture stuff. Dr. Patricia Ramsey will say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. Antoinette Coleman will say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Dr. Byron Price so say yeah. The number one will say yeah, yeah. The will say yeah, yeah. Dr. Yeah. 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 Better than just saying that. Just 
And um, you know, when I go to the UN, the AU, everywhere I go, I want to take Africa with me because Africa is the essence and the heartbeat of this global government. And that's why this work is so important to me because um, So in the midst of all the hurt and the pain and everything that's going on, um, I'm going to give the first bite to you, Fisher. We come from Ghana, which is a land of chocolate, and uh, we bring you sweetness and radical love. And I want you to share this. And I just want you to know that we love you. And I'm just so grateful that God brought us together today. I want to share with you. Ghana has the best chocolate. And I should taste this chocolate. It tastes different than the chocolate that you buy in the store. This is the real thing. This thing is, um, you are going to taste the difference of this chocolate. So I want to just put a little bit of sweetness in life today. Uh, in spite of all the pain and the hurt that we want to do. I believe that in the same bodies occupying the same spirits occupying new bodies. Yeah. With the same spirit occupying new bodies, we came across the Atlantic Ocean. We went through all the bitterness of every single tear that you cried. The story and, and I want you to know that we appreciate and love you. You are the Joseph that God made for this people. That through you, Africa will be emancipated. The most the knowledge that you carry is what we are all going to need. All the diamonds, all the gold and the diamonds that we sleep upon, what is going to unlock it is education. And so I want to honor you respectfully that since you came here in March 2021, the things that you have done. Even at $20 million that you got, I know you're a woman of power and I'm coming for some of that money. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make sure. We are a thriving people. They didn't know that we were caught. So when we get caught out of the water, it comes out. And so many, when we had the year of returning time, it became very clear that there were bridges that we needed to build. And so you do have an open invitation to Ghana. Just know that. So that I'm not, I'm not only are you coming to Africa, we're inviting you to Ghana as a homecoming that you come home and reconnect with us. So it's a home of each other. It's not like any other business. So what we're doing this year is instituting something called the Mission Him Possible. And that mission is going to be, as um, uh, Reverend Jamal Bryan to say, um, Muslims go to Mecca, Jews go to Israel, but African Americans come home to Ghana. And when you, oh, sorry, when you do come home to Ghana, you understand why. When you walk through the slave dungeons and you see what happened to our people. And for me, um, Dr. Ramsey, I know that your husband is a man of the word. Um, I'm now a reverend minister, but this really messed me up for many, many years because right on top of the, of the dungeon was a church. And right underneath were our people crying. So for many years, I didn't want to hear about Christianity until Christ showed himself to me and I started a relationship. So I know there's a difference between religion that has been exploited and misused. And I know the difference of the real deal also. So today, as we go through this book, Deadly Work, Decent Work, this has been an incredible journey. Uh, I started writing this book about 14 years ago, 11 years down the line, it started to write me. And 
the more I got involved in the stories of the young women and what they were doing, I thought about my own daughter and said, this cannot happen and I cannot be silent because each of those daughters and each of those ladies that we're seeing are precious children of the most high. And we, as Mama Africa, each one of us, must feel in our womb what we feel when our own daughters go through pain. And so it made me have several sleepless nights to the extent that I was going after people who then turned around to go after me and I was me, um, falsely, bless you, <laughs> falsely of human trafficking. A very difficult and pain, painful time in my life that I had to go through in the middle of writing this book. And I said, but the book must still come out in spite of. And immediately the book came out and became a bestseller. And the African Union and several African countries has become the go-to book in terms of finding out how to have decent work on the continent. Our daughters are crying. And during the COVID-19, this particular situation went to this, its worst ever. Uh, I now formed a group with African presidents, former presidents and, and current presidents in uh, Malawi. And this was in April of last year. We see President Selen Johnson, said, uh, Johnson Selleck is here. And I believe there was a trip from Mega Evers to Liberia. And um, she is one of the co-founders of that, of that particular coalition that we put together, including uh, Dr. Joyce Banda, and some of the sitting vice president right now, um, Dr. Joel Taylor, and other vice presidents and presidents on the continent. So this is a very important high level group. And we've now become, I call ourselves the mother hen. You touch one, we're gonna deal with you. So now they know that we are there. And so they don't touch us as much as they used to, but we thank God that this has had that kind of an impact. So Jinya, I mean, and everything that I do, um, my creator, I probably wouldn't be standing here um, if it were not for him. And so for everything that I do, my creator, this for the working group, for advancing of social justice, this is your mantra. We want to be able to learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless and plead the case of the widow. This is what I live and I want to share with you. So as we go through this program today, this is what happened during the COVID-19. We're talking about social distancing, only it didn't apply to African women. And African women have been at the center of wherever you find struggle, you find her. And even in the Middle East, this is what was happening to our daughters. And so we decided to start a war cry that we couldn't just be silent because no one would, no one would cry out for us about our daughters. We have to be the ones to cry out. So we started the war cry. We went to the uh, International Domestic Workers Federation and we, we partnered with them. And so we need to get the word out. This is just not acceptable. Thanks. We went to Dr. Joyce Banda from the Bani. She's a very powerful woman. And also at the African Union, Dr. Bennett from the Diaspora African Forum. We wanted to get the diaspora involved. We tried to get everyone involved, former heads of state and heads of state to be at the center of this. So Dr. Joyce Banda took it to another level. She started to knock on all the doors. We've got to make this stop. Um, our president, uh, President Anna Akufuado, also took on this, this, this warfare with us. We have uh, Dr. Julius Madabio, who's a, the president of um, Sierra Leone, invited me to Sierra Leone and said, we don't want what is happening to the other continents to happen. And we know that you care about our children. So please come and be the person to help us to put a migration program together which would not, which would be decent work, and our daughters don't have to cry out like that. So we have a whole group now in Sierra Leone. We built an infrastructure for them. We went with them to Saudi Arabia to make sure they sign a bilateral agreement and put a framework in, in place with social protection for our daughters. So that cry has stopped because of that. Now there's a working system in the in the Middle East called Kafala, 
And Kampala is a system that does not believe in the okay, I can stay with you for it. Okay. Does not believe in the, I like to move along. This is gonna be very I'm gonna do my best. Can I pick it up? I can't move it. Yeah, okay. Wow. Well, we can hear you. Okay, okay. So what happens to Kampala is Kampala believes that um, in that particular system for domestic workers, I'll make it work. Okay. Yeah. For domestic workers, they uh, they don't have an employer and employee relationship. It's more like an owner and a, like a slavery. Okay. So uh, that's to put it as bluntly as you can. So it means that I own you whenever and whatever I say you want to do. And it, it's really uh, hard for you. But we're saying, no, that is not acceptable. We need it to be employee-employer relationship. So I'm going to share with you, go through the gallery of some of the issues that were happening. This young lady, her name is Faustina Tay from Ghana. And unfortunately, some people don't go the normal route. There are lots of unscrupulous agencies out there that take people you know, and traffic them and send them. This young lady cried out many times, even to her brother and to the agent. They rather took her to the, uh, the agency and beat her up to go back to where she was working. Because when she leaves, it means that the agent has to pay back. They pay thousands of dollars to get these women out of Africa to these countries. And so they pushed her, somebody pushed her. Uh, the day she said she wanted to go back home, she was pushed from the balcony and she was found dead. So this is not um, something about just, you know, it, it's a matter of life and death that we must arise. Okay, next one. She was burned. Her name is Latifa, went to Kuwait, and um, they burned her. In the, there was an explosion in the kitchen. Many of these women don't get training before they go overseas, which is what we were talking to our governments about. They come from the villages. Some of them have never seen a microwave before. I know there's a young lady put you know, oil in a frying pan and stuck it to, to fry an egg and almost blew up a whole house. And so there's responsibility on both sides. You know, um, This one was murdered. She was murdered. She's from the Philippines. She was murdered. She was found. They put her in a refrigerator and just closed the refrigerator. And they came back and she was dead. Then we had in Ethiopia, she was executed. They just slashed her throat. And then we have um, this young lady was also returned. They put 24 nails in her body. And so you're talking about a certain level of wickedness that is beyond human comprehension. And that comes through that system, which does not recognize that person as a person, they're recognized as property. We have um, Lensa from Ethiopia. And she jumped from the second floor and just jumped to her death. This one was set ablaze. Mary was set ablaze by her employer. And we have Somaiti. Uh, they had a hot iron that was just insulated on. Nice. But it doesn't have to be like that. So after all these years of cries and, and um, advocacy and activism that we have been doing, so the countries have to change their, their tune. You know, there is, so when I see um, the late Medgar Evers and how he was taken at such an early age because of the wickedness that is, is there. And I'm standing here today for the brutal death that he went through on a day like this. There has to be another way. But that way does not happen when we are silent. Our silence is not golden. And each and every one of us has a responsibility because God put us here for that. When we are silent, then we actually help for the atrocities to continue. So our voices become the bomb that heal people. And so we must never be silent, especially on the continent. African women cannot be silent in the face of the atrocities. African men cannot be silent in the face of the atrocities. And we want all of us to join hands to make sure that this narrative changes. So in the face of the activism, some of the countries were now forced to start to change, especially with the FIFA 2022 that was coming. The Middle East and the International Labor Organization said to them, we're gonna move this from here if you don't change. 
All right. Now we have FIPAP 2026 is going to be coming to the United States. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to be hired, people will be trafficked, there are going to be all kinds of issues. And so I need us to raise, to be on alert, and to be watchmen and women on the walls. And our people should not suffer. Because we had in Kenya, they brought 89 coffins were brought back home. How does a mother go and meet a child in a coffin when they're supposed to be a breadwinner sending funds home? $48 billion is sent as remittances from from the various countries in the diaspora to Africa. And so it becomes a financial issue. People do need to have these remittances come in as their lifeline. And if they don't have it, then there's going to be a problem. So this is something that is so important that we have to make sure that we move from deadly work to decent work. Now for deadly work, you'll find they seize their passports, their sexual harassment, Sometimes the father and the son who all sleep with one lady. Um, they don't pay their salaries, there's no day off. But there is decent work. Now they are shifting to that where they don't keep, they, they give them their passports, there's no social, social harassment. Salaries are now being paid and they have a regular day off. So wherever you find the kafala being practiced, you find the deadly work. When they have now been knocked on their doors hard enough and Lord, we are watching, they can do the decent. So it's a matter of us making sure that we are constantly in their ear and in our daughters will not suffer. They will let them work long hours, no rest periods. And what they do for false accusation, somebody can work for a year. They say, oh, we're keeping your salary for you. In the Middle East, stealing is an abomination. They could kill you, stone you to death for it. So there's, all she has to say is, Oh, she stole my jewelry. Now, this girl has worked for a year. They don't think so. We'll keep your salary when you're going home. We'll give it to you. When they say you've stolen my jewelry, she goes to jail. From jail, straight home. She doesn't take one thing that belongs to her. Now, she comes home to Africa. Her parents are like, How come you don't have any money? Then they shun her because she's supposed to be a breadwinner. How dare you come home empty handed? Because there's no understanding of exactly what's happening. And so these young women are suffering from both ends. And so now we've brought a voice to the, to the issue, and now the countries are trying to see and understand what needs to be done. And now they put in, we have insisted, and now they have put in wage protection. When you start working, every month you get paid, you set up a remittance system so the money comes directly. So any month, anyone is not paid, we know immediately. Uh, they are executed without diplomatic discussions, and they are in slave-like conditions. There are 10 African countries that send most of these workers, Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Nigeria, South Sudan, we have Somalia, Morocco, Tunisia, and Chad. And there's some of them are Muslims, and then uh, there's a balance between the Muslim and Christian countries. Yeah. Now we're finding Saudi Arabia has a, the largest population, of course, so most of the issues rise out of Saudi Arabia because of their population. They're 34 million, and they bring in about 2.3 million um, domestic workers. Now the domestic, so a one home can have five or six domestic workers. So they become um, what they call essential commodities, quote unquote, because they have so much money now. And um, you know, when you finish school, they give you $200,000 to go and get married and start life. They have deep pockets, they have a lot of them. And so they are able to pay people to bring them 5,000, bring me, I need this one, who can do this and do that. If it's in Kafala, it can be anywhere. And these are being marketed on Google. They are Google markets now, where people go to buy these women. Uh, Jordan has them, uh, UAE, Lebanon, Oman, Kuwait, Qatar, and Bahrain. So what we did was went into the system and started to look at which of the systems are good, which ones are, are moderate, and which ones are good conditions where they are decent work. And then we started to advise the African presidents because I'm on the African Union Labor Migration Advisory Committee. We advise African presidents on which way to go when it comes to migration. And I found that we were not advising them because everybody was just sitting doing other stuff. I said, no, these women do not belong to rich families. So nobody really paid attention to them, but they are just as important to God as they are to anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so we started to make enough noise and now the research started to start and then they were able to set things up so that the African presidents now are aware 
don't go this way, go this way. So now there's a compass for them to avoid some of these things. Yeah. Um, you will find that what was happening is they sent the workers, 100,000 girls from Kenya went to the Saudi Arabia. And then when they start to abuse them, then they, they start they stop it. The system they use is called kafala. And that is the system that I mentioned to you earlier. You're not a human being, you're just a property. So we now develop a wheel called the uh, Decent Work Deal. And it begins with dialogue. We believe that you need dialogue and agreement between the countries where they send the people. There should be awareness that young women should know what is decent work, what is not decent work. They need to have cooperation between the countries and interdependence, where every all the communities should be working together to make sure that things are working well. Safety should be number one. We don't want to have anyone going into any work where they are not safe. And that goes through anywhere in the world. Law and order must take place and there should be quality recruitment. We work with the um, agencies to make sure that they are doing the right thing. Everyone must be cert certified before they travel. It is a great injustice for us to send young women into jobs that we know they're not qualified for. It's an injustice to them and even to the employer because they're paying a lot of money to bring these young ladies in. They can't watch, they don't understand what they're supposed to do. And it's an injustice to them, that's it. And then uh, what we do is also make sure that the, there's a plan for them to reintegrate it into their families and communities when they come back. And last of all, is to ensure that they have financial security. That's why they went in the first place. We don't want them going anywhere if there's no wage protection. She might as well have stayed at home and slept. So these are the 10 keys um, for the deadly to decent way that I've just uh, go to the next page that I've talked to you about um, in detail. Now, what we want to do is uh, we have proposed to the African Union a process. In the Philippines and other places, they have processes like you know, the Bali process, uh, Colombo process. The, the Asians came together and they decided that this, we're gonna have a unified contract for all of our workers. We're gonna make sure that every domestic worker going from the Philippines earns $400 to $500. The Africans are earning $200 to $250. And the difference is because there's no dialogue. And so now we're organizing the African presidents and bringing it to their attention. And we're saying, add value to your, your workers. Make sure they are trained and they are certified because they deserve as much dignity as any other person. So that's what this, we've asked them to set the system up. It was an expert. So now I don't want her to leave. That's why I'm wrapping up now. <laughs> so what we are proposing is um, we are looking to bring many of these young ladies that you're seeing have college degrees. They have first degrees, they have high school degrees, they are bright, they're intelligent. They are not interested in prostitution. They just want to earn a decent living. And so they go into these things not to be abused like this. And so what we are saying to the African presidents is right now Africa is moving towards China and towards these other countries. Uh, the US Africa Leaders Forum that was held in 2014 during the time of President Obama and then during the time of President Joe Biden, which was in 2022, made some promises. Some activists have said, let's bring 100,000 Africans and let's see how we can do have a transformation. What we're saying for these African women is there's a better way. And education is the key. I know the cannabis project that you're working on, Dr. Ramsey, completely innovative. And there are so many things that we can teach our youth so we don't have them walking around with the biggest cup in their hand. Coming from a continent that is so rich, Africa could be the bread basket of the entire world. We have so much land. And there's so many minerals, so many opportunities. I know Dr. Um, Byron Price is committed to the green life. There's so much you can do in renewable energy. And we have endless opportunities, but the people need to be educated. So for what you're doing here in liberal arts in Medgar Evers College, we would look forward to an, a partnership because there's enough to be done already. These ladies who have a high school degree, they could bring up the SATs to a very, very high level. And so we need to make sure that we are putting our money in the where our mouth is and engaging these women and giving them higher education so that now they can be, we can add more value to their lives. Instead of them going somewhere else to be abused like this, 
if we had a system where we can support them, then this deadly work would not even be an option. We need to open doors where you are. You are our brothers and sisters. You are the bridge. So as you see those opportunities coming up, we can give them hope. And you know, we don't have to bring all of them. You bring a few who go back and they create the opportunities. They become the entrepreneurs. They go and do those farms, the cannabis farms. They go and be entrepreneurs in all these other fields because I like the practicality of what you're doing here at Medgar Evers. You know, in all the areas that you're working, you want to make sure that the, 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 when the products that come out of here are employable. Not only are they employable, they think critically and they think about how to take the classroom information and translate that into the real world. And having traveled 40 African into African countries, that's what Dr. Bayan Christ has been doing in talking to different African organizations, uh, from even all the work that you're doing in the prisons and so on, is really to lift our people. No one can lift our people, only we can. So we are looking to bring the African presidents here in September, September 26 to 27. Um, We've already conducted a pilot program from 2018 till now, and we want to be able to roll out 10,000 Africans into various organizations and schools around doing different kinds of educational programs. Our organization, Necrotech Center, is putting out $25 million to start this program. And we've already started, we've done a pilot already. We're giving $2 million to uh, Sierra Leone next week. And then the following, we're giving another $2 million to Ghana. And we're looking to bring African countries together like the dream of Kwame Nkrumah. It's not just about one country. All of us are part of Africa. And so when we have something, we need to share it to the other African countries also. We're looking to bring 15 African countries. So we would like to set up um, getting some banking partners in place. Uh, because education, when you take a loan for education, it's not a loan, it is an investment. And so when we are able to plant one seed from that, it will be fruitful and it will be multiplied in many different ways. And so we're looking to have that uh, one an opening presentation of scholarships to the presidents. And then we want to activate other partners to come on board. And I know that when we come together, we'll be stronger, we'll be better, and we can have a solution and we'd have started a new revolution because we'll have them in various areas to now go back and do something for the continent. Uh, we don't want them coming home as coffins. We don't want dead bodies coming back home. We want them coming home to lift our people out of poverty. So we are looking at making sure that all the sending countries are, are put in place, everything that we need is in place. And we would, we would really extend this to you uh, that we can work within the uh, city of New York, uh, the Kuni family of uh, 25, 28 schools that you have. Um, we can bring this to Kuni because all these students who are coming in, we need homes and schools and housing and so on. And uh, this is going to be the, one of the biggest movements. Uh, we don't want our daughters and our children to go to be sold. Slavery is over. And we have a responsibility to see that slavery, after 400 years from 1619 till now, does not start in another realm. It's going to take each and every one of us with all hands on deck. I thank you very much for the opportunity of this. most interested in seeing how academic affairs, since I put you on the spot here, um, how we can be involved with this. Um, we have a number of international students here and we're welcome expanding our boundaries, Dr. Price, to ensure that we can educate with the support of our president, the women of Africa, because that's what we are here for. That is so I appreciate you. Thank you. Well, My joy is fulfilled in hearing you say that. Yes, and I'm sorry I have to run out, but if you could get that information yes. to yes, the person and I. Yes, okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And we will see that.
I can't wait to have you home. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> so, one of the things, for us to put your stand on that. One of the things Mayor Adams talked about, like migration issues. So this is another opportunity, I think, President Graham, for us to probably work with uh, Mayor Adams and uh, the Princess in the African Union around some of the migration concerns that they express in New York City as well. I have a meeting with him on May 1st. Okay. Well, you already had it. <laughs> and so are there any other questions for Prince? But last thing, we're also going to do a presidential planning committee, and we need to support a leadership if it's interested to have it here so we want to do a planning committee so we can make sure everything is, is done right so we'll reach out to miss anderson to just sort of like uh put the proposal to see if we can get on the schedule and share that information with spread the grant so i start there and, uh, so are there any other questions for the princess we want to collect as many hbcus as possible but i believe morgan state university that's you. Right. No, no, no. How would Howard 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 Missouri, Missouri and Morgan State. So there are no questions on the Well, well, I invite you all to Ghana. Uh, Mission Impossible. We have two batches. Uh, I'll be discussing with him, so he he pass the information to you. It's going to be spectacular, and you can even pass it on to the um, student body. I would love to see us bring some student body because we're going to have a rite of passage. So many things that we're taking across the Atlantic were left behind. And it's time for restoration hmm. because all the things that we're going through here, this the, uh, it was it was planned for us to lose our identity. Mm -hmm. You know, when your names in Africa was like your street address. So if I say Babalola, I know which home the person is from. When I say Okansi, Okansi means I do as I say. Mm -hmm. That name, I know the family that this person is from. I can find your relative. The idea was for you to never go back home, but I've come to take you home. President Ramp, you know, pretend you said some of our students come over when we meet the president Absolutely. that you're talking about launching this program, bringing the uh, students from Africa here and the, pro and the nanotech and the scholarship. So I think this is something, you know, we're trying to get a trip out of president. <laughs> <laughs> we bring them over and teach the president that yeah. they potentially come to the campus in September, mm -hmm. but also be a part of the scholarship program, right. helping to send their students from their countries to the Mag Average College and other colleges. Mm -hmm. So and there could be a, a big announcement on the continent, you know, that we're sort of bringing the diaspora back home. You know, you, you did the, the return, now we're talking about education, STEM, Absolutely. and all other things. It's education. It's really on oh, the next level. It's education between us and building real bridges of education. We have a whole building in Ghana, and we can do a campus. Those are the things I want us to entertain. Maybe it's just one course that is taught. They started in Ghana, and then they come and do the rest of it here. One year in Ghana, and then three years here in Brooklyn. So there are so many different things I would like us uh, to discuss, but let's definitely build that bridge, because I know that the blood of Medgar Evers was not shed for nothing. Absolutely. And his name being on here since 1970, and all the work that you have done, and the new blood that you have brought in here since the time that you came, and all the things that are happening is a new era. And that new era must lead us to a higher place. I thank you all so much. Well, I, I was just going to um, say that I would like you to follow up so that we can kind of do some planning around this. Yes, ma'am. I just, I'm bringing some close remarks to the program, and I would just like to thank you. Um, this, oh, absolutely. Oh. It's really hard for me to follow, like, the program that presentation that we had, because as heartbreaking as, as, as the um, incidents are, it is just 
something that displays the resiliency of our people, right? And it is something that, that as hard as it was to watch, still produces hope for us and for our people. And with you being here, and with the president and the attendees being here, it kind of slaps in the face of what the purpose of the Chancellor and Slave Trade was. And the opportunities that are being presented to us are allowing us right, to transcend and to, to rebirth, to reconnect, to reestablish in a stronger way right, than we even were before. So thank you again. I look forward to the opportunities that, that we are um, have kind of discussed on, on, on the fly, but imagine when we sit and plan them, right? What those really look like. And it's, it's, it's encouraging. And I will say that this is, this is one of, of several events that I've attended um, that, that we've put on that are leading to partnerships, right? Across the ocean, but also across the country. And that in itself is encouraging. So thank you. Thank you. We want to present an award to a Princess was not able to pick it up. So we're going to get President Ramsey to present an award to her. So to the Honorable Princess Akansi, we present to you this award. Um, so that you all can see what it looks like <laughs> for the work that you have done and for allowing yourself to be used by God for this work. So we thank you for sharing with us today. And I look forward to us working together in the future. And I'd love to have a great day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Award actually belongs to someone here. From last year till now, I've been battling cancer. <laughs> and um, my daughter did everything God used her very, very nicely. She stood with me through the battle. And I am somebody who likes to make things happen. So he doesn't even know. He's just finding out there. Hmm. And I've been quietly battling this, and God has given it to me. And by the grace of God, I'm very happy to let you know that all the love and the care that this young lady has given me has given me back my life. I'm now cancer. <laughs> Is to me because this is my first public appearance since this whole thing started last year. I've not gone anywhere physically. Mm -hmm. My brother here, uh, Dr. Byron Price, he's like the brother that I never had. And uh, I love him dearly, my dear brother. He's been uh, really very supportive. And so when he said he needed to come, I couldn't say no. But this young lady, the care, the love. She even bought a home. She made me very comfortable. And I probably, honestly, I had triple negative breast cancer. And I want to say that because though I had learned to keep it quiet, the Lord said no because it can heal other people. Triple negative breast cancer is a cancer that Black women are the ones who get it the most. So the treatment, when you get triple negative, you die. Because they don't even know, most of the people don't respond to treatment. In fact, the first treatment that I had, I almost did die in the first three minutes. They had to unplug me and then change everything to a treatment that was 40 times, 40 times more expensive than the one that I'm here. If you know how expensive cancer treatment is, you would know that. So my life now is really, um, I pick and choose where I would go and the things that I need to do. Because when you go through this kind of experience, you start to choose your battles. Mm -hmm. 
you start to look at life very differently. And you want to do only those things that will glorify God and mean something to you. So what you're doing is very meaningful to me. And when I read your story and what you've been doing for the school, I, I need you to be part of it. Sacrifice, would you get one, please? Yeah. Oh. You know, you don't want to put you on the spot. Put the bags down. <laughs> Why I, I said you shouldn't go. I will give you a royal invitation to Ghana wow. and make you a queen. And this is the Sankofa. Many of you know about Sankofa. Yes. Yeah, we have to go back to our, our past, our roots, yeah, roots. our history to go for. This is a genial symbol. And the bookmark has the, the symbol. That's the book. And I have a special oh, wow. description wow. for you. Like it's faculty, students of the school. Just want to thank you very much. Thank you. 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 So now we got to call you.